The purpose of this animation is to illustrate the difference between the first in first out and last in first out data stack operations. In this example we will be using the FFL and LFL load as well as the FFU and LFU unload instructions. We will push three values onto two separate data stacks using the FFL and LFL load instructions. We will then pull these three values off the stacks in two different ways using the FFU and LFU unload instructions. The first rung in the program loads data values into two different stock locations. The second rung unloads values from the two data stocks and sends the data to two different output locations. The FFL and FFU instructions make a first in first out type data stock at file addresses B31, B32, and B33. The LFL and LFU instructions make a last in first out type data stock at file addresses B35, B36, and B37. Each pair of instructions will share the same control file reference. The FIFO stack is using the R61 file address and the LIFO stack is using the R62 file address. The status of the enable, done, and empty bits for each pair are kept in these R6 file address locations. Both pairs are using input rack 1 as the source for the input data being pushed onto the stocks. In addition, input rack 3, bits 0 and 1 are used to load and unload data into the stocks. The FIFO instructions will send data pulled from the FIFO stock to the LEDs connected to output rack 02. The LIFO instructions will send data pulled from the LIFO stock to the LEDs connected to output rack 04. This will illustrate the difference between the first in first out and last in first out types of data stocks. It will also show us how the data inside the stock moves with respect to the position pointers. We begin by placing the first value we wish to load on the I1 input rack. We then press and release the momentary switch connected to input rack 3 bit 0 to load this value into the two data stocks. The current I1 input word has been loaded into both stocks and the stock pointers are pointing to position 1. Next, we place the second input word on the I1 input rack and load it into the stocks in the same manner. The second data word now appears in both of the data stocks in the second stock position. We repeat the process for the third data word to complete the loading of the data into the stocks. As can be seen, the values have been loaded into each stock in the same manner. As the stocks are now full, the done bit is high for both load instructions. The stock and pointer behavior was virtually the same for each type of load instruction. The major difference between these two types of stocks will be illustrated in the way in which we pull values from each stock. We create continuity on the unload rung by pressing the switch attached to bit 1 of the I3 input rack. The first word we entered is pulled from the FIFO stock and appears at output 02. The remaining values stored in the FIFO stock have moved up one address location. In contrast, the last word entered is pulled from the LIFO stock and sent to output 04. The remaining values in the LIFO stock stay in the position they were originally in. We repeat the operation to pull another word from the two data stocks. Now in both cases, the second word entered is pulled from each stock and sent to the respective outputs. And finally, we pull the last of the data from each of the two data stocks. The FIFO stack sends the last word entered to output 02, and the empty bit is set. The LIFO stack sends the first word we entered to output 04, and as it's empty, its empty bit is also set. 
These data stock instructions are widely used throughout PLC applications.